Three weeks ago, I gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby boy in our Tulum home, all natural, in the water, with our dream team. So my intention with this video is to inspire as many women as possible to have an empowered pregnancy and birth. What an experience. <laughs> it's, it's a journey. My name is Jessie Pino, and this is my birth story. So here we are, Saturday morning, November 13th, right upon waking, I told my boyfriend, these Braxton Hicks contractions this morning feel a whole lot different. Um, I can feel like menstrual cramp feelings and a lot more sensations than I used to. So Braxton Hicks contractions are practice contractions that your uterus is contracting and it's just exercising for the day of labor and birth. So I've had had a lot of Braxton Hicks throughout the last trimester of my pregnancy, but this was definitely a new feeling for me. So I was kind of excited about that. We just went on with our day. It was very mild, I would say. So we went on with our day, did some shopping. In the afternoon, I remember feeling like nesting. I was happy it was Saturday, but I was happy just staying home and doing nothing. So my nesting instinct was on. At around 4.30, I went to pee and there was a little bit of blood on the toilet paper. So I got really excited. I told my boyfriend, I showed him, we took a picture, but we didn't send it to the team because we thought it was not that serious or that obvious. And my thought was that it could be the mucus plug. The mucus plug can be something that happens over the course of a few days. So again, I was excited that things were maybe moving at this point, but I didn't know how fast it was gonna go. At around 8 p.m., I went on, had a great shower, and uh, had great dinner. So, I'm having contractions now that hurt. <laughs> Which is new. I would say they hurt like a four out of 10. Actually, I wanna give space because, oof. Three on 10? 3.5. They were coming in more frequently and I was starting to, to feel them a lot more. So I told my boyfriend, I'm gonna download this contraction timer app from Gentle Birth. And just for fun, I was tracking a few and I was timing. I was like, okay, like they're pretty frequent. <laughs> they're lasting a long time. So this was all new for me, obviously. At about 9.30 PM, my boyfriend was going to bed and I felt absolutely not like sleeping. But he was convincing me that if this was real labor, I should probably get some sleep and get some rest um, while I could still. So I went to bed with him, not feeling like sleeping. I picked up my book from Ina May that I had been reading throughout the whole pregnancy. It's called A Guide to Childbirth. And I was at chapter seven, which is giving birth, move freely, let gravity work for you. I thought pretty interesting considering where I'm at right now. I was laying down on my left side comfortably with my body pillow, just the way that I had been sleeping for the, the last months of pregnancy. Louis was already sleeping at that point, and then a wave hit me, and I just thought to myself, wow, this is a lot more intense than it was standing up a few minutes ago when I was just in the kitchen doing dishes and just walk around the house. The first few lines of that chapter that I read were saying, don't be surprised if you feel restless in the first stage of labor, and movement can greatly help your baby move down. So I thought there's absolutely no way I'm gonna get some sleep right now and there's no way I wanna be laying down for the next wave. So I got up and here we go. So from the moment that I got up, I really religiously tracked all of the contractions I was having and they were coming in at about every five minutes. So I just walked around the whole house, tried every room of the house, tried every position that I could. And at around midnight, 12.30, I got a notification from my app that said, based on the conditions that you're in, um, the frequency of your contractions, you seem to be in active labor. Congratulations, keep that focus and contact your healthcare provider. But for some reason, I kept thinking that I was in false labor. I've been wanting to get into labor for so long. At this point, I was so excited to have my baby. I was like, am I creating this? Or am I like thinking too fast that this is it? And it happens a lot to first time moms. They don't know what labor is, what real labor is. So they have like false labor. 
where they feel a lot of waves and they feel a lot of sensation, but there's no progress being made um, when it comes to the cervix or anything. So for some reason, I kept thinking I was in false labor. For that reason, I didn't contact my team and I just kept trying all of the positions, went on my rooftop, was pulling on my ropes. Things were not necessarily feeling any better. I was like, okay, what position can I do that will make these waves easier? And I went outside, tried some yoga. I tried all the seated position. I found myself on the toilet pretty much every hour. On the toilet kind of felt comfortable and good because obviously we're trained to just relax our pelvic on the toilet. So my body seemed to be emptying itself, which is a usually great sign for real labor. Around 3 a.m., I just remember feeling so physically exhausted. I just wanted to go to bed, but I could not lay. I could not lay on my side. I tried a few times, and every time a wave would hit me laying down, I would think, don't be laying down for the next one. So thank God for the app Gentle Birth. I had done throughout the last trimester of my pregnancy a lot of hypnobirthing sessions and a lot of um, affirmations with this app powerful, intentional, and they really, really helped because they were literally at this point in my subconscious. With the hypnobirthing, I was able to doze off for a little bit. And after a few sessions of hypnobirthing, I was able to lay on my side and I stopped tracking at this point the contractions and I was just trying to ride the waves and to tune in the hypnobirthing sessions and her voice and her guidance. And wow, like what a gift it is to have this guidance. This app, the Gentle Bird Contraction Timer, really saved me throughout Saturday night because her words of wisdom were just so precious in that time. I also had a great surprise because she did say at some point, you can do anything for a minute. And I had no clue a contraction was only a minute. So when I realized, okay, like the sensations are really strong for a minute, I can absolutely breathe through it. And her guidance of thinking things like each waves are bringing your baby closer to you and each waves is one less until you meet your baby and when the waves hit you for me anyways i felt like it was a bit hard to breathe in deeply so she would just remind me breathe in deeply and send that oxygen to your baby and connect with your baby so i would completely listen to her and breathe in deeply and at that time I figured a rhythm of 10 deep breaths, 10 deep inhale, exhale, and after 10, the sensations were slowly going away. And then you get these rest periods where you feel absolutely normal, you feel nothing, and you feel great actually. So this is where you get some times to think about, okay, how do I want to be positioned in the next one or to doze off. So when I was able to lay down at about 3 a.m., um, I was able to kind of doze off in between the waves which felt really restful but it, it was so brief but better than nothing so I was really appreciative of that afterwards oh my boyfriend throughout the night kept waking up and finding me in different rooms of the house and one time he arrived and I had French braids on he's like you braided your hair I was like yes and this is the kind of things you can do during a break because you feel absolutely oops you feel absolutely normal um, and then when a wave hit you just want to write it the best you can. So I was convincing him to always go back to bed. I was like, I'm fine, go back to bed. I think I'm in false labor, but if it, this is false labor, I don't know what real labor is going to be like. Um, finally, I started to see the daylight and I remember feeling so happy that the night was over and that it was now daytime. My boyfriend got up at 6.45 a.m., came to see me right away and asked me about my night and I said to him, I literally could not sleep, so I haven't slept all night. I was so happy to talk to him, though I was very energetic, considering I had, I had had a sleepless night. But when a wave would hit me, I would literally have to stop talking and focus. And what I loved was standing bent over on the counter. I was looking at my feet. I was moving my knees like this. And I was telling him, like, I'm just picturing a surfboard and a wave and me riding the wave and I was just breathing heavily for 10 deep breaths and that was getting me through the wave because you'd rather surf them and be on top of them than being under and taken over by them. So that was my mindset for um, all this labor. 
Also, throughout the night, this woman kept telling me, you are safe, which this, I remember the good feeling when she was saying that, you are safe, I'm right here with you, everything is perfect. And I kept thinking, that's right. I was actually happy to be by myself at that time and to try and figure out how to handle this and how to manage this because there's a lot of sensations happening and every contraction it's asking you to rate the intensity. There's mild, moderate, more intense, and then very intense. And I kept rating them at moderate because I was like, if I'm being realistic and a baby is going to come out of my body, I think I need to leave some space for some sensations. There's some of them that definitely hit me at a 6 on 10. I remember my boyfriend asking me, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10, you can't handle it, like, how, how much? And I was like, 6 at some point. But the thing is, maybe it's 6 for 20 seconds. So it's really bearable. So that was my, my point of view on um, this sleepless labor surfing night. <laughs> seven a.m. Sunday, November 14th, 2021. So after updating my boyfriend about the night that I just had and how I felt, we decided that it was maybe time to text the dream team. The dream team being, of course, my lover, my doula and my midwife. So we had a group chat all together. I let them know how my night was, that I thought I was in false labor or maybe in real labor, I wasn't sure. Because at this point, the reason I was still maybe thinking I was in false labor or that this was a false start was because they were not coming in closer in frequency and I kept rating them at moderate intensity. And I was convinced that if this is real labor, they're gonna get closer, closer, closer and more intense as time goes by. And it was not really doing that, it was really inconsistent. My midwife arrived around 8.15 right away and she came and checked on me. And at that time, I was so physically exhausted. I was also hadn't eaten anything since dinner on Saturday night. So I laid on my side, on my left side, on the couch. And as the waves would hit me, my midwife would touch me in such a way. It was so relieving. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what you're doing, but it makes those contractions so much more bearable, like so much, they were feeling better. Um, I guess also the transfer of energy was helping. I felt the love, the support. And after having spent an entire night of trying to figure this out by myself, it definitely felt so relieving to have that presence. So she massaged me through the waves and she did check me and said, you're gonna have your baby today. So I remember the bliss that I felt inside for many reasons that I was gonna meet my baby and that this was not false labor. So all of this made progress, a lot of progress. She said I was open at about 2.53. She stayed for a little bit, made me feel better, left the birth pool here and a few things. And she just told my boyfriend and I at this point, I wanted to rest and I was able to just ride the waves laying on my side and dozing off in between during the break. So that felt so relaxing and so um, recharging. So she said, reach out to us when either it gets more intense, if your water break or if they get closer in frequency of time. So my, my midwife left and at this time Louis had noticed what she was doing to me during a contraction. So from that moment he pretty much assisted me in all of them. Whenever I would have one and start breathing heavily he would come and help me manage it which just felt so much better. Till about noon this was my position. I stayed from what 8 a.m. till about noon laying on my left side. I had a pillow between my knees. I was just eyes closed breathing through them. I knew the rhythm at this point. When one wave would come in, I would breathe in heavily for 10 deep inhale, exhale as slow as I could. But then I knew that the, ray, the wave was then going away and then I could absolutely doze off. And that felt um, recharging. In the meantime, my boyfriend was setting up the house and placing our altar and lighting on our uh, intention candles that we had done at our baby blessing with all of our amazing friends. He set up the birthing pool, he set up everything so that in case things were going to move quickly, things were going to be ready. And great intuition he has. So my boyfriend was cooking food for the team and for the week to come. So he managed to do all of this and to assist me in 
all the waves that would hit me. In the meantime, obviously they kept in touch, him and the team, and my doula was asking to come over and I kept telling Louis, I just want to sleep more because I can still afford to sleep and I was so grateful for my body allowing these. I had longer breaks at this time, like 12, 15 minutes sometimes before another wave would hit me. So um, there's one at about 12, 15, he filmed me having a contraction. I was seated and he filmed me having one by myself and he sent it to the team. This is when my doula said they look pretty strong and she came over and arrived at about one. So I remember feeling so happy and excited to see my amazing doula because we've been preparing for this day for months at this point. I was just so excited to see her and update her about my night and how everything felt. I remember her being like, okay, like you can sit down, you can relax, do you want to lay? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I'm having a contraction right now, I'm just going to lay down. So I went to sit on the couch and lay on my side and we all heard a big pop. And at that moment, we all heard it, it was super loud. I felt so vulnerable, I was literally in a fetal position on the couch and I was like, oh no guys, is there water all over the couch? And thankfully there was pee pads. I just remember my doula and Louis like cleaning up after me, cleaning up the mess and I just had my eyes closed and I was like, oh my god. In the meantime, riding a wave. So, and I remember thinking, wow, my belly already looks like half the size. I was like, baby is so small. So I was kind of laughing through it, which is great. And then my doula massaged me, laying on my side, riding a few waves. And I remember thinking, they don't feel just like they did at 8 a.m. right now. I think I need to sit down and I think it's going to be better sitting down. She's like, okay, sit down. I'll keep massaging you sitting down. I sat down did a few waves like this, breathing heavily. And I remember at this point I had my doula in my back and I was like, Louis, come in the front, come in the front. And I, I kept putting my head in his stomach. And for some reason it felt so good to have this, this thing to push in the front and my doula massaging my back. Once you've had the luxury of having support like this during the waves, it's, it's just yeah, a lot more pleasant to have that support afterwards than being by yourself riding them. After doing a few seated, I remember thinking, okay, this is getting too much right now. I need to change position. The feeling of moving is so, so incredible. You do actually feel like it's, it feels so good to just change position and move around. So in my head, I did think at some point, would there be something that could make this easier for me? Would being in a hospital be easier for me right now? And I kept thinking, oh my God, and you're free in your house. I was running naked with a team I trusted and I could be vulnerable and I would feel safe and fully supported. And feeling safe is just key to have a positive, easy, gentle, peaceful birth. So keep that in mind, feeling safe, feeling at peace in your environment, very, very important. So at that point, I had done a few waves laying down with my doula. I had done a few waves seated up with my boyfriend in the front, my doula in the back, and things were getting a bit more intense. And I said, I think I need to stand up. And I love the height of the counter in the bathroom. So I love standing and putting my hands there. And that's something that I had had experience through the night, right? Because I had the whole night to try all the rooms in the house and try all the positions so I knew at this point was what was making things easier for me and what felt better. I was grateful for that as well. So as I'm in the bathroom, I remember my doula telling me, wow, Jesse, bloody show, yay! And looking down and seeing full of blood on the floor. So I just remember being on the counter in the bathrooms. I was on my hands to start with, bent over, riding the waves. And then at this point I was on my elbows, like half of my body was laying on the counter. And there was a switch happening. My boyfriend was taking care of me at this point. It wasn't my doula anymore. They brought me a pillow. So I was kind of half sleeping on a pillow on the counter during the breaks. And then when a wave would hit, I would ride the wave. And I started doing things like squatting and like bending a knee and like doing some like pulses, like movements starting, started being a bit different. I was completely eyes closed in my head. I was inside of me and I remember the voice of 
this woman that I had heard all night, overnight, with her wise words of breathing deeper and relax more, surrender more, and keep focus, focus on your baby, send that oxygen to your baby. So this, these affirmations and these mantras and these positive, empowered words were definitely running through my subconscious at this point. It was like in my programming. I was absolutely in that flow. I'm guessing my doula went and texted my midwife, things are getting a little more intense. And this is why my midwife arrived not long after that. It was maybe around 2 p.m. And at 2.30, just because I have the times in the videos, um, she was tracking baby's heartbeat. So just making sure everything was fine. I was in the same position on my pillow, in the bathroom, on the counter. And um, I was really, yeah, inward and eyes were closed. I was really focused. And at this point, I remember feeling so physically tired. I was hot. My legs were kind of tired from doing these squats. I was probably laboring there for, I don't know, an hour. And I remember thinking this bird pool right now would feel so amazing. Wow, that birthing pool. Let me tell you, I'm a big advocate of the bird pool. So when I got in there, everything is padded, there's handles, it's just so comfy. The water felt so relieving. Thankful for this moment because I felt like I had a long break. When I first got in the bird pool, I absolutely dozed off. I feel like I almost slept. And at this point, I remember just losing track of time. So I was in the vortex on my own journey. Everything was happening inside of me. I had a long break coming in the bird pool and once a wave hit me, I remember my doula hang giving me her hands and we were doing this, pos this position and I could, I could pull very hard and for some reason it is so good. It makes the contraction way better. So from that moment on, I did that with my boyfriend afterwards and he just could not leave my side for the rest of the bird pool session. It would just feel so good to pull with my arms, I would pull so hard with all my strength. But again, it's just kind of a minute around there anyway. So after that, you have a break. I was just doing the same concept, my same rhythm. I was breathing heavily, 10 deep, long breaths, but definitely the breathing was starting to get harder. My midwife at some point wanted to check me. She checked me and said, ooh, there's a lot of progress being made. You're about at an eight open. So when she said that, I remember thinking, oof, I'm close to the transition period where when you're open at eight, then when it's at 10, you're in the pushing phase. And there's this transition phase that in all the bird stories, they call the transition phase that is kind of, um, things are shifting and energy is shifting. You get into this adrenaline rush and things are getting more intense. But I remember thinking in my head, like things are, it's already so intense. Like how can this get even more intense? But for some reason, you feel what's happening, but you also don't feel. So it's a very interesting concept. Um, I will get more into details with that later. It was just so amazing to have my doula pouring water on my back and my boyfriend holding my hands super strong and just having the support around. I was like, oh, I'm feeling cold. Can we add hot water? Oh, I'm feeling hot. Can we start the AC? So again, having that support for me was like, wow, amazing and I just remember how peaceful it was. It was very silent, there was this angelic music in the background. And yeah, very peaceful. And it's funny because I kept, I kept saying that I was not gonna scream at my birth, or anyways, I kept making jokes about it, that I, I was like, no, I think I'll be able just to breathe through it. But at some point, my breathing started making different noises by itself, so I was just, for me, on my end, what I was controlling was my 10 deep breath rhythm that I had found that worked well. But now my body was starting to do like, like noises like, uh, kind of like that. And my body would like shake like, uh. And of course, again, I'm laboring, eyes closed, I'm tuned in. But in my head, I was like, wow, what is this noise? Where is this coming from? I'm not doing this, who's doing this? So it was very interesting. Then I had breaks, but then the next one, I started breathing heavily, but then on the exhale, I would do like, uh, like louder noises that were just coming out of me. I was, I was absolutely surrendering because I remembered 
In the birthing pool time, I was in my head remembering surrender and surrender more and welcome them in and each one is one less. And of course I had my boyfriend kissing me and telling me how strong I was and the team constantly sending these little golden nuggets of um, powerful affirmations, which obviously feels great as reminders. So yeah, I kept thinking, open your hands, relax your jaw, because you tend to just type everything. <laughs> At some point, my doula made the sound of like, with your lips, and then I did that with my lips. I was breathing in and just like by myself, because that relaxes your pelvic. So another thing I learned in my birthing course. I could feel things shifting, definitely things were, were changing, intensity was definitely more up. And literally from there, the noises, the sounds I was making just kept getting more intense as well. I remember at this point, like shifting position, I would try like one knee up, do a wave like this, lift the other knee, do a wave like this, go in frog position, do a wave like this all these waves I was pulling on my boyfriend's arms really tightly. I remember, yeah, feeling like kind of an explosion outward. <laughs> and in my head I was like, wow, I think my baby's out. And then I came out and I just looked at my midwife and said, is the head out? Because that's how I felt like it was. And she said, no, but your baby is crowning. And then I remember touching because to me, baby's crowning was the head was out or I could touch the head. So I remember reaching down and touching and just being like, oh, I just feel gooey. So from that moment, I knew that I was in my pushing phase. So I knew that I was about to meet my baby and things got really exciting. Inside of my head, I was just so thankful because I would feel my, ex my vagina explode. I would feel everything move out and outward, but I would not feel any pain. This is so amazing how the human body works because when you have a natural birth and you go through your labor, um, all natural and at home in a peaceful environment, your body produces its own cocktails of hormones. So at this pushing phase, you have all of these, you pretty much have your natural morphine that your body is producing. And let me tell you, for me, it worked really well. pushing phase for me lasted an eternity, but for my team really it was only 20 minutes because when you're in the vortex, you lose completely track of time. Like I didn't know if I was in that bird pool for 10 hours or how much time. All I knew is that maybe my baby was coming. I remember having a wave. My body was completely taking over. The noises that were coming out of me were just completely outstanding. I was like surprised. the head was out and I took a moment to touch it and I touched it backwards and for some reason I was like oh, I don't know what I'm touching it kind of feels weird I took a little moment I had a break and then I looked at her and I said so one more push right next contraction <sighs> it was the next contraction hit I grabbed my boyfriend and with all of my strength I just let my body do the thing here he was Koa's grand arrival at 4 33 p.m. on Sunday November 14th 2021 yes, Oh, my God. 
Emotion that I felt, the first feeling I felt was how surreal is this? I could not believe what was just happening in front of me. It was just so amazing. <laughs> So it was so magical, but inside of my head, I knew that I had to birth the placenta. Happily, it was very easy. It just came out as like a warm blub. From there, we had our magical moment all on the couch and Koa had his first breastfeeding session. We all had a placenta smoothie, cheers, <laughs> with all of its goodness. And afterwards, the doctor came to our house to do the birth certificate and to weigh our baby and make sure everything was all good, which everything was. Okay. What an experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> And in conclusion, I'm absolutely grateful for my birth dream team, my midwife, my doula, my lover, and my baby, because your baby is doing this with you. And I'm also grateful for all the mentors, all the amazing books that I read, all the mothers that have helped me on this journey and gave me their tips and their insights. Grateful for all the do documentaries and the amazing birth stories that I have read, that I have watched and heard. I'm just so inspired by all these powerful women and it did influence me positively. I just wish to inspire as many women as possible. So if you feel called to share this birth story, please do. So we empower as many women as possible to trust this divine intelligence, to trust that nature is perfect and to trust that we are designed to give birth. And it's such a transformative experience. And I just wish for as many women as possible to experience this in their life. And I just want to thank you for your time, for watching my bird story and listening and sending you so much love.